Church family, and welcome to today's episode of Cadence. Today we are going to continue in our reading of Thomas Akempis's uh, classic book of the Imitation of Christ, as well as reading scripture and praying together. Will you join me as we begin this time in a word of prayer? Almighty God, we do thank you for all that you do for us, and we thank you for the new mercy that you have given us on this day, that we might open your word that we might uh, consider what it is that you have for us, and that, Lord, that we might live our lives uh, in service to you and for your glory. Lord, be with us now as we open uh, the scriptures, enlighten this text, and help us to understand it. For we do ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Friends, I invite you to listen carefully, for this is God's word. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that we can trust him and all that he tells us to do. Truth is one of those important things that we must always know and understand to be something that we as Christians stand for. Truth is uh, something that we should never be afraid of or ashamed of. In fact, I believe, and I, I believe it is consistent with Scripture, that we can say that all truth is God's truth, meaning that if something is true, it is good, and it comes from the Lord, and that ultimately that that truth uh, would be um, manifested uh, and revealed to us by God. And that's an important thing to in our lives that we have to understand, especially in a day and time of social media. Um, it's, it's very interesting how social media is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, if it wasn't for social media, then uh, we would not be able to connect with uh, friends and family all around the world, and we would not be able to, to share with one another all of the, the things that uh, are happening in our lives. Uh, during this time of pandemic, social media has been uh, very important, uh, especially related to communication uh, and for the life of many different organizations. Uh, us as a church, uh, as for a big example, uh, part of the, the outreach of the church uh, during this time of of pandemic has been social media through Facebook and through YouTube and, and through Twitter and, and other uh, instances. We've, we've uh, been able to communicate and, and publish worship services. And it's been one of those blessings that we've been able to utilize this technology and these spaces to uh, stay connected to the word and to, to one another. Uh, so in, in and over that, that, we know that social media can be quite the blessing, but we also know that it can be in many ways uh, a curse. It can be something that is used to propagate and, and to promulgate uh, things that are not true, uh, rumors and gossip and, and, uh, and various other types of hurtful language can be propagated through these mediums, uh, just as just as well as all of the good things that, that we can celebrate. And so as Christians, we have to be very uh, aware and, and honest with, with who we are as God's people, uh, and especially as it relates to our presence and, and, and online spaces. 
And so today, as we consider what Thomas Akempis has for us, I'd like to challenge us as a people uh, to, to look into our usages of social media and, and the things that we share and the things that we consume uh, and the things that, that, that we participate in and the various ways that we participate uh, in social media and, and, and really ask ourselves the question, how can we use this platform and use uh, these spaces where we where we connect with again with family friends and we can connect with with church members and do worship services we can do meetings and, and all of those things how can we as Christians responsibly use um, these tools and these technologies to better the world around us um, it, it can be quite frustrating when we see uh, untruths and lies and uh, uh, gossips and uh, and all kinds of, of other harmful languages and practices uh, get kind of pushed outward and uh, it, it really is a frustrating thing I think for us as Christians because we have to understand and know that our witness encompasses everything in our lives and so as we ponder what it means to, to be a Christian and especially a Christian in a highly uh, technical world. Um, may we look today into these words, especially from James, that it talks about uh, just how small a member uh, uh, and, a, and a part of our body that the tongue is, but, but how much harm it can do. Uh, may we understand and know that that we should have our mind focused on the things of God and that as we live in this world that we would promulgate the truth of God and that we would see these opportunities that we have to connect with one another as extensions of our witness, uh, things that are um, important to God and that we can use these to benefit uh, the kingdom and the kingdom work. Uh, as well as uh, pushing forth uh, the glory of God and the gospel. In chapter 4 of, of the Imitation of Christ, it is entitled, Forethought and Actions. And so Thomas Akempis writes, We ought not to believe every saying or suggestion, but ought warily and patiently to ponder the matter with reference to God. But alas, such is our weakness that we often believe and speak evil of others rather than good. Good men do not easily give credit to every tale, for they know that human infirmity is prone to evil, as Genesis 8.21 teaches us, and very subject to offend in words, uh, as we have just read in James chapter 3. It is great wisdom not to be rash in actions. This is what the Proverbs teach us. Uh, nor to stand obstinately in our own conceits. It belongs also to this same wisdom not to believe everything that you hear or to pour into the ears of others what you have heard or believed. Consult with a man or a woman who is wise and conscientious and seek to be instructed by one better than yourself rather than Follow your own inventions. Again, this is the teaching of Proverbs chapter 12. A good life makes a man or woman wise according to God and gives him or her experience in many things. The humbler a person is in themselves and the more resigned to God, the more prudent they will be in all things and the more at peace. These are important words for us to understand and know because we, as the people of, of God, are called to be those who are reconcilers and peacemakers. And so as we seek to imitate Christ, as we seek uh, his direction and his way and his truth and his life for ourselves, I pray that we would uh, heed these words and understand the importance of our work as reconcilers and peacemakers. Will you now join me as we go to the Lord in a time of prayer? Let us pray. 
Almighty God, we do thank you for how you speak to us and how you instruct us and how you guide us in all that we do. I pray, Lord, this day that as we contemplate our lives and contemplate the great blessings that we have been given, that, Lord, that we would understand in great humility just how important our witness is. We know and understand that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We know and understand that you have a great purpose and a plan for us and for this world. But oftentimes we lose sight of how we fit in to your purpose and your plan and how we fit into being part of the way, the truth, and the life. And so, God, I pray that you would help each and every one of us as we consider our lives, as we consider what you have called us to do, that we would not be obstinate, that we would not be prideful, that we would not be stubborn, but instead that we would be quick to listen, uh, quick to repent, that, Lord, that we would be uh, taking time in our lives to, to meditate and consider your wisdom uh, as we make decisions in our lives. And Lord, especially as we live our lives and our workplaces and our school places and our neighborhoods and in our online spaces, that God, that we would be a consistent and unified witness to the world, that instead of being people who stir up uh, with untruths and stir up with gossip and rumor, um, uh, various aspects uh, of our lives and the various people in our lives, that instead, Lord, that we would trust you and seek you, that we would understand and know that you have called us to be your ambassadors of truth and that you have called us to be ambassadors of reconciliation and that with that comes the idea and the task of peacemaking. And so help us, Lord, to be individuals who trust you enough to declare your truth, to declare it humbly and lovingly, but then also to see and understand that you have called us to be in the places where we are in order to declare the riches of your gospel and of your glory. Lord, help us in these things. For we ask all of this in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Friends, it was good to be with you today uh, as we have read scripture and considered together what it means to be a witness for Christ. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.